The budget laptop from the previous video happens to have the slowest graphics card NVIDIA makes with RTX branding in the name. And in today's video, we're gonna take that RTX branding and shove it down its throat. Um, but, but before we get to that, if like me you spend most of your time in a gamer hole and are suspicious that your gaming performance may be blunted by your own exhaust fumes, then today's video sponsor the Aronet 4 CO2 monitors for you. With its genuine NDIR sensor in it, you will get highly accurate CO2 measurements of your room. It's also conveniently color coded. When it's yellow, probably open a window. When it's red, you're likely dead. I think. It also comes with a handy app if you want to track your air quality. So get yourself an Aronet 4 CO2 meter using the link in the video description. Now the graphics card in question is the RTX 2050, a mobile GPU based on the same GA107 die in the RTX 3050. Except there are a few key differences. Nvidia did cut the memory bus in half, something they're a huge fan of doing, and they also reduced the core frequency to hit lower power draw targets, leading to decently worse performance apparently, something I will be confirming in this video by occasionally comparing it to this Asus laptop that has an RTX 3050 in it. Now comparing GPUs and laptops is kind of difficult because all the laptops have different hardware configurations, but if anything, the 2050 based laptops have the advantage here, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, before we get to the testing, I did upgrade the RAM configuration in the HP laptop from the hedonous single 8 gig stick to a 32 gig dual channel kit because, you know, we want to be nice to the graphics card, give it a chance to succeed and all that. So let's get to the testing. <laughs> so this is the best way to use a gaming laptop. I'm just going to switch its display over to the, the external one and then I'm going to close it so that it's got perfect airflow. Cool, there we go. Ah yes, we don't have a desk blocking our airflow anymore. Oh, that's not a great sign. Ooh. You can just see its struggle to render them rays. Look at that. Motion blur is disabled, wow. That's not what I was expecting to see there. But then things got weird. Oh, oh, things are happening. It hasn't crashed. It, it is still technically running, I guess. Okay, that's what happens when you bring the menu back. Eventually, I just snuffed the game out with Task Manager, and when I restarted the game, it quickly recovered from its night terrors. Oh, that doesn't feel good. Let's bring up the ray tracing settings and... No way, this performance is with DLSS on? And it's DLSS 3. Does that make sense that that's working on a 20 series GPU? <laughs> I guess, because it, it is working. We do need more of it, though. That is doing a bit better. Granted, this is with lots of DLSS happening, but we're getting about 20 frames per second with our rays being traced. This is with performance DLSS. Things are looking quite spiffy. Uh, it, <laughs> it doesn't look like I'm growing hair on my eyes as much as normal. So I decided to try some ultra performance. Okay, so with ultra performance, like magic, we now have almost 50 frames per second with the ray tracing stuff happening here. And even at ultra performance, honestly, DLSS is doing a very good job here. Damn. Although it doesn't like movement near high contrast edges. That is some smearing. Okay, so when, when we're looking here, let's see what happens when we turn it off. Custom D, just, just off. That's not going great, is it? Six frames per second. It does look a lot better though, I will say, <laughs> if you don't move the mouse. Either way, depending on what's going on in the scene, Portal RTX has quite the DLSS implementation. But considering this non-upscaled result, I'd say no, the 2050 can't really ray trace. And the RTX 3050 in the other laptop did a decent bit better, giving us a very impressive 9 frames per second with no DLSS on. Nice. But with that, let's try some other games. I've gone to yield faithful torture tester Battlefield 5. This is a 1080p high settings. And with the laptop upside down, I mean, that is quite the thermal mod because instead of hovering around 100 degrees Celsius, the CPU is just hitting 83. So yeah, I guess we all just use our laptops the wrong way around. Uh, anyway, this is without ray tracing though. So we're getting about 60 frames per second. 
In my experience with Battlefield 5, going to ray tracing, you usually lose about half your frame rate. Now, Battlefield 5 does have a very basic ray tracing implementation. It's not even global illumination, the loser. But either way, the 2050 is kind of managing here. I don't know if I would recommend this, but it meets the minimum requirement for running, I guess. Let's turn it up to ultra. We went from about 34 to 29 frames per second. Wow, those are some beautifully reflected trees. <laughs> the bullets don't really do anything to the water, okay. So here, we still get the, okay, the sky just got in the way of it, but we still get beautiful tree reflections in the water. We get fire on our gun, ooh, look at that. But we've not really lost that much frame rate, down from about 60 frames per second. So this is probably the high point. I don't think it's gonna go better than this at any point for the remainder of the video, but I guess we'll find out. Interestingly, the gap between the 2050 and its bigger brother is not as big in Battlefield 5 as I was expecting. I think it's because despite both laptops being in max power mode, the 3050 really wasn't drawing that much power, minimizing the difference between them. Cyberpunk at 1080p low settings is way more playable than it was at high settings in the last video. <laughs> but with that, let's make it unplayable. Turn it on, and then we're gonna do this, which is basically the lowest ray tracing setting that can happen. Yeah, about 20 frames per second is where it's evening out. So already not going very well. Okay, let's turn everything above path tracing on. Oh yeah, the abuse is starting to settle in here. 15 frames per second, which I don't know, I feel like we haven't lost quite as much frame rate as I was expecting us to lose at this point. Yeah, and remember, this is with the GPU running at max power. That is, that is as much power as the laptop wants to give the 2050. I guess we can still go further. We need to just do Psycho here on... That's as much ray tracing as can happen. And we're using that at 1080p low settings, which is pretty funny. It's enjoying that a lot. It says 400 frames per second, but okay, yeah, no, that makes more sense. Zero. Ooh. Does it, does it get used to it eventually? Is that a thing that's gonna happen? Do we? Now we're still stuck at one frame per second. I don't think it's really gonna go anywhere from there, but we're getting much better performance. <laughs> you can tell by the frame latency. Uh, that it is, whoa, look at that. We've gone from almost 2,000 down to 700 milliseconds. Yeah, this is, this is playable now. I then outsourced some of the work to AI, hoping to get another frame or two. So there's a lot of AI technology going into making this run better now. It's in fact running 400% better than it was before. And this is with performance DLSS, which has made the graphics go all cartoony looking. Okay, uh, I, I feel like maybe we need to do ultra performance. Is that, yeah, that's as low as it'll go. Oh, damn, that's me. <laughs> it doesn't like fast movement very much, but with ultra performance DLSS and psycho ray tracing, we're actually getting about 30 frames per second. Ooh, it looks like complete butt cheeks. You know what? Ray tracing has nothing to do with making the game look better. It's all about the EP of pressing the psycho button and having your system be able to run it. And even with by far the least powerful RTX graphics card, it is playable with the psycho button. But there was still one thing left to do for even more frame rate. Now the game's starting to look real nice. So this is the lowest resolution the game supports with ultra performance DLSS. So the actual render resolution is gonna be like three by four pixels here. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think you can tell at all. This looks very good. Again, not a huge difference between these GPUs, but interestingly with Cyberpunk, the 3050 is drawing more power than it was with Battlefield 5. Now I also wanna give Quake 2 RTX a quick try because it's always hilarious how much frame rate you lose. We're currently sitting at a thousand frames per second because this game is older than my grandma. But then you go into graphics settings. Yeah, you switch back to, to RTX. 30 frames per second, not even. Whoa. It does look so much better though. I, I keep saying this, but I feel like this is ray tracing's best use case, is going back and making old video games all sexy for us. Oh, 
terrible things are happening with Fortnite. Ooh, at 1080p low settings with epic draw distance, Fortnite's doing some weird stuff, real seizure here. So it's been a while and it's kind of evened out, and now we're getting a reasonable frame rate, but with big movements and stuff, it is still pretty stuttery. Anyway, let's turn on some ray tracing. Wow, DX12 makes Fortnite run like it's taking a jackhammer to the face. So now that the seizures are slowing down, the little 2050 is doing much better than I was expecting it to. And I think that it being able to handle Fortnite's ray tracing, it's like the most important thing it needs to handle. Because if you're 12 and you buy this laptop, you want to be able to shout at the other people in the lobby about how you're using Nanite's textured ray tracing settings lumen action and then they're all gonna be very impressed with you and then you can tell them how your dad can beat up their dad because of your ray tracing. You just need to hope they don't have a 3050 based laptop because that'll be real embarrassing for you. I also wanted to try Control because I think this is one of the early ray tracing games. Depending on where we're looking, we're in the 50s. So yeah, I, I don't know. This, this 2050 is really not a very powerful GPU on medium. Less than half. It's not quite half the frame rate we lost, so not too bad. And for that, you get some remarkably shiny concrete. Now this game also has some DLSS going for it, and I like how it implements it. It doesn't give you like performance or whatever, it just shows you the render resolution. Uh, but yeah, so with 720p, we have almost entirely, if not more so, gained our frame rate back and we get to keep the shiny concrete. Which means we can get our rays traced even harder. Now with the concrete even shinier, we're still getting the same frame rate we did with native resolution without ray tracing. DLSS, when there isn't a huge difference between the render resolution and the res resolution that you're actually using, it looks decent, you know, it looks good. Weirdly, Control was the only game where the 2050 marginally outperformed the 3050, which could be maybe down to those additional RT cores. And with that, what did we learn in today's video? Well, if you're real desperate to have your rays traced and don't mind some hairy eyeballs, you can just about get away with ray tracing on the least powerful RTX graphics card NVIDIA offers. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, bye-bye.